Welcome back. We continue to track the progress of Tropical Storm Arthur. Not moving very much right now off the east coast of central Florida. Let's look at it on our satellite and radar, spinning nearly stationary here. Center right about here. Notice that a lot of the weather's on the east side. That's pretty typical of tropical systems, especially when they're in a development stage. And it's not a hurricane yet, so a lot of times these systems aren't completely wrapped around with heavy rain bands. Certainly it is some weather on the west side, but it's always weaker on the west side. So we are going to be on the good side of things here. The center is roughly 85 miles east southeast of Cape Canaveral. Max winds up to 50 miles per hour, mainly around the center and off to the east of the center. Let's look at the latest National Hurricane Center forecast track, and this is a high confidence forecast because the models are tightly clustered. The upper level steering appears to be in place. It's going to start to move to the north as we head through tomorrow. And then off to the northeast as we get into Thursday. And by Thursday afternoon, it could be a Category 1 hurricane, but the track well to the east of us, and the combination of us being on the weaker side and being well removed from the center means that any dangerous effects would be well offshore. We can see an increase, we will see an increased risk of rip currents as we head through Wednesday and Thursday at the beaches. So if you plan to go to the beach, keep that in mind. Otherwise, any outdoor plans you have uh, look to be in pretty good shape other than a stray shower or thunderstorm chance. And then as we get into Friday, the question is, does it make landfall in the Outer Banks of North Carolina? It could come close, but being that it will be a hurricane at that time, it will certainly will have impacts on eastern North Carolina as they will be close enough to feel that even being on the western side. So eastern North Carolina, most under the gun for land areas. Otherwise, for us, it's all going to be out over the water. Let's look at a, a forecast model here for precipitation. Right now you see that some outer rain bands occasionally make it on the Florida coast there, but notice that the Florida coastline juts back to the west, as does Georgia. So as it moves north, it's actually further away from land. And notice that tomorrow there's no rain on land here unless a stray shower pops up as it heads northeast again just about all of it is offshore maybe an outer rain band comes down on the back side through thursday morning but basically any significant impacts are well to our north across upper south carolina and especially eastern north carolina from late went thursday and into friday so the bottom line from this is that any danger stays well offshore just keep in mind there will be an increased risk of rip currents at the area beaches here at home, it is hot. Temperatures still in the upper 80s to low 90s. Some mid 90s out there as well. 80, 95 right now in Baxley. You can buy the temperature and the heat index or the humidity, and it feels like it's 101 in Vidalia. It feels like 92 right now in Savannah. As we go through tomorrow, there's only a slight chance that we will see a shower or thunder shower pop up. Otherwise, most areas are going to stay dry. So 74 first thing in the morning. Then we're up to 92 as we head through the afternoon. Here's your tides. High tide tonight, 11.45 p.m. Out on the water. Seas will increase Wednesday and Thursday, and so will the risk of rip currents. Here's your latest pollen report. Mold remains in the moderate range. And your storm tracker seven-day forecast. Just a slight shower or thunderstorm chance next couple of days. High Hot and dry for the 4th of July and typical summer weather right on through the weekend. Stick around, plenty more after the break.